is Tenebrae? The Tenebrae service is unique liturgy of the Catholic Church, which refers to the chanting of matins and lauds during the Holy Triduum. The word Tenebrae means in Latin darkness or shadows. In this liturgy, the only light comes from a large candelabra holding 15 candles, which are gradually extinguished until one candle is left. This practice gradually brings the church closer to complete darkness and is a moving symbol of our Lord being gradually betrayed by the apostles in the darkness of a world fraught with evil. Finally, when the crucifixion is commemorated in this office of shadows, only one candle is left burning and this final light is then taken and hidden behind the altar. and passion of our Lord. It is one of the most ancient services of the church, and its texts are some of the most powerful in the liturgical calendar. Not only are many psalms sung to stark tones, but the mournful lamentations of Jeremiah are also chanted. At Wyoming Catholic College, we've been singing Tenebrae for nine years. We started small, uh, just singing one evening of Tenebrae on, on Wednesday of Holy Week, and then we moved up to adding a second evening of Tenebrae. And this is a lot of preparation because each of these services is about two and a half hours of solid chanting from beginning to end. Uh, we, we, we offered Tenebrae to begin with in response to Pope Benedict XVI's Sumorum Pontificum, which of course uh, encouraged the celebration of the Usus Antiquior, or the older form of the Roman Rite, of which Tenebrae is a part. Um, the students have responded enthusiastically to it. The men in the scola have risen to the challenge. Um, the students have, have packed the pews. Um, it's been a beautiful experience to, to revive and celebrate Tenebrae here at the college. Yeah. of Tenebrae, which is matins and lauds for the Triduum, Maundy Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, uh, this office dates back to the first millennium of Christianity. It's one of the most ancient of our liturgical offices, and it's remained remarkably stable and unchanged over all of these centuries, um, until unfortunately it was, it was abolished um, after the Second Vatican Council. But happily, Tenebrae is making a comeback in many, many places across the world every year you can read about all of the different uh, churches, cathedrals, chapels, parishes that are celebrating Tenebrae again. Um, and, and it's well that they should celebrate it because this is one of the most profound meditations on the Passion of Christ uh, that the church has ever offered to the faithful. It consists of a series of, of prophetic messianic psalms talking about the sufferings of Christ. It consists of readings from the Lamentations of Jeremiah, which are uh, devoted to the theme of, of the, the um, apostasy of Israel and the destruction of the temple, uh, all of which is, is hauntingly connected with the passion of our Lord and, and the treachery, the betrayal, the abandonment by the, by the apostles um, in all of the different prayers and antiphons of Tenebrae. Um, it, is a, it is an intense participation in the mystery of the humiliation, the dereliction,
Even the ceremonies of Holy Thursday and Good Friday contain some consolation. On Holy Thursday, the altar of repose is decorated and we can keep company with our Lord. On Good Friday, the cross is finally unveiled and we can kiss the feet of our Lord and receive him in the Holy Eucharist. But Tenebrae is sorrowful, complete with the darkness of Gethsemane, the desolation of Golgotha, and the blackness of the tomb. Yet even for all these things, attending Tenebrae is a wonderful way to enter into the motion of the Passion, to experience in a different, more visceral way the sacrifice of Jesus for our sins. Without recognition of the darkness of sin, Easter's light of life cannot be meaningful. See.